My name is Tonya Curry, and this is this week's Acumen Media Report. It's entitled, The President and the Pretenders. Picture the scene, Heritage Day 2022. The EFF, led by Malema, makes their way to northern KZN, Zululand. They claim they want their land back, but seem to have forgotten that this land is Zululand. The clue is in the name, Juju. This land belongs to the Zulu Kingdom. No person owns lands here that is not Zulu. Regardless, Julius rode into town without a compass. Either that, or he's just downright dumb. I think the term in Parliament these days is uh, Domkop. The red tide made its way to the border of Mozambique. Why? No one knows. We were in for a party, though. There were even posters up in Sedwana Bay for the big event, and the buses were seen coming in from far and wide. Not local at all. And you won't believe it. He never came to visit me. I wanted to invite him for a cup of tea. I mean, if it's good enough for Inkan, La, it's good enough for me. I wanted to have a chat. I wanted to tell him that he is lost. Not just GPS lost, but lost in general. I wanted to tell him that he kick-started the EFF like a marketing genius back in the day and that his groundswell was so impressive that I wished I could vote for the EFF even if they didn't want me. I wanted to tell him that in the Beningin, he was a complete maverick and gave many hope. What happened, Juju? Now you can't even use Google Maps. The great pretender, we see you, Amandla. A few years ago, that would have been the top story, but now it's just a local one. Without further delay, and on a point of order, let's scratch the surface of this week's news. It's been busy, my good people of the Republic. I'm not sure that I caught all of it, but here's what I could discern from the headlines. Ramaphosa. He made headlines most week. He attended an event at Gallagher Estate to talk about electricity. Karma can be a bullet train because midway through his speech, the lights went off. To redefine the way, I'm sorry about that. And the crowd roared with laughter. (laughs) Our prayers became the great pretender just laughing like a clown, doing a bit of a shuffle from one leg to the other, hoping that we couldn't see how uncomfortable he was. Pretending to be what he's not, you see. Pretending that we're not around. From Gallagher to Parley for the President's Q&A. And this time our President actually, drum roll please, fessed up. He really did. Allow me to paraphrase. He said that corruption is part of our currency, that Eskom has been plundered, and that today, apart from the tyranny of corruption, we have a bit of terrorism chucked in the mix. He said he sold some cattle and the occasional buffalo and sable, and he didn't see what the big game, farm gate, fuss was about. We wasted at least an hour on that question without solving a single thing. But he did fess up. There have been some big political moves this week, and when you cobble them together you get an ANC in disarray, a point of no order. I typed Ramaphosa into the clever Acumen Media machine. It shows that for every post this week, and there were 30,000 of them, that there were at least six responses that were negative. Ramaphosa's reputation on the back of ESCOM has tanked to 90% negative. Reputation matters in tatters. Let's come back to Zululand for a minute. The KZN conference was an absolute shocker. Zuma rose from his terminally ill bed and was going to have another go at that Mr. President thing. No one thought it was a good idea, not even in Kosozana Dlamini still a Zuma. What was the combination of leadership that this conference spat out? No other than Aspestos Machashule and Paul Mashatile, and please don't forget, Minister when people's all. So when people's all, they put saliva with the pain.
snapped back with me to the president's Q&A. It was subtle, but the president finally stepped into the ring. He spoke about how the road to hell was paved with good intention and that cable theft, brown envelopes, and Jimmy Choo shoes are here to stay. Eskim is going to become the corruption ATM and that we should suck it up. This is South Africa 2.0. It was, as you would expect, a rampant, raging ruckus. But hats off to the chairperson. Well, hang on. In the beginning, see, I can't say it properly, she completely lost it. And then it was like someone gave her a tranquilizer. Her tone dropped. She apologized for her own behavior when she called an honorable, smiley face, Wena. After that, she handled the chaos like a boss. There were too many insults. Wow, I have no words, but the pretenders did. They included Domkop, homeless idiots, and others, but Madam Chair was brilliant. There is no hopeless idiot here. You, you withdraw unconditionally. She took no nonsense. So she switched off microphones like it was her calling. Parliament has become so noisy, I must be getting old. People shouting point of order to the point of disorder. But my friends, the prayers fessed up. Kudos to that. Or maybe he wasn't fessing up at all. Perhaps he was giving up. Hmm. The pretenders. All eyes were well, on ESCOM's push this week, advertising hint for my peers. The schedules didn't tie up this side, though. Not sure what you got out there in so-called civilization. Praveen Gordon has washed his hands of Eskim, saying he is leaving Dorita to the board for decision. Let's shift to what is happening to the ANC. In just one week, Hambagwede became the call of Kasatu. Gwede Mantashe was on stage this week at a Kasatu conference and the crowd started booing. Mantash, and you'll never believe me, did a little dance when the crowd started singing Hamba Gwede. I don't make this stuff up, folks. I just work here. Great pretender. In one of the metros, I don't remember which one, there is a new coalition to govern that, that took seven parties to make the coalition. Maybe more. It might have been more. Those seven parties were then to use, used to oust the ANC. I couldn't work it out, but imagine the administrative nightmare managing that particular metro, South Africa 2.0. My Amani launched Boza. Who does the marketing here, please? Don't you think the link to Bosasa is just a tad too close? I mean, really, which ponytail came up with that? We deserve so much better. Where are you, civil society? We're on our knees here. There's lots more to talk about, but I'll keep it brief. Malema and Ndlozi were acquitted for the assault of, at Mama Ma Winnie Mandela's funeral. This happened in the same week as her birthday. I'm glad about that. If it was my mom's funeral or someone that treated me like her own child, I would also push the security guard to get to her coffin. Waste of time and media attention, if you ask me. Afri Forum are crying into a bucket. But get on with it. Put race behind you and do some work, pretenders. Yachus Fontaine became a massive talking point, as did the Pongola crash. I get it. These stories are important. But can we focus on how to fix this stuff? There was King Shaka Day. Tata Butelezi was there and spoke and conducted himself like a champ. The king, in traditional dress, donned a set of sunglasses. Never Ever forget your shades. South Africa 2.0. The journalist, Karen Morn, wrote a scathing article about how the public protector, Busa Siwe, used a major PR campaign to discredit the judiciary. That made Zuma so grumpy that he pulled a Karen. He threw his toys out the cot and then got chucked out of Concord again. Good to see he's made such an incredible recovery. Someone call 10 triple one. The great pretender. In other news, Zilla wants Republic of Cape Town. Take a lot are accused of having sweatshops. Bain is finally banned. Well done, Ethel. Tefel was disbarred but didn't seem to understand the ruling. Pretend, Tefel. Just pretend. 
The whole world sides with Iranian women and Israel puts out a lovely video saying they will always have their support. Don't look beyond the video, though, as a list of Palestinian women were killed and four strong spirits of resistance were smashed to smithereens under Israeli hands this week. That's my lot, folks. Get a compass, take a load off, smile and wave. I'm eating a potato bass this weekend, and he doesn't pretend at all. I'm Tonya Curry, and you've just scratched the surface with Acumen Media.